Today, we're going into the mind-boggling concept of wave-particle duality. Before jumping into the wave-particle duality, let's first understand what is the meaning of a particle and wave. Imagine you have a tennis ball. It's a solid object, right? The tennis ball has a defined mass, position, and velocity. It behaves like a particle. When we say something behaves like a wave, we mean it can spread out, interfere with other waves, and create patterns. Just like when you throw a pebble into a pond and see the ripples spreading out. The distance from tip to tip of a wave is known as wavelength. So, you cannot transform a tennis ball into a wave and similarly the ripples of the pond into a particle. What is the wave-particle duality? In the tiny scale of atoms and particles, things don't always behave like we expect them to. In 1924 French physicist Louis de Broglie formulated a hypothesis, known as the de Broglie hypothesis, which states all matter particle exhibits wave-like behavior and waves exhibits particle-like behavior. According to de Broglie's hypothesis, a wave is associated with our tennis ball. Even a wave is also associated with our body. Now, replace our tennis ball with a subatomic particle like electrons. Electron has definite mass, position and velocity but according to de Broglie's hypothesis electrons can behave like waves, which is one of the main concepts in quantum mechanics that every particle may be described as either a particle or a wave. De Broglie discovered that there's a relationship between the momentum of a particle and the wavelength of wave associated with it. It's called the de Broglie wavelength. When a particle has a higher momentum, its associated wave has a shorter wavelength. On the other hand, when a particle has lower momentum, its associated wave has a longer wavelength. In 1929 de Broglie was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics for his hypothesis. 